All right, so we continue now is chapter four. We report this uh, principles of accounting. Chapter four is about completing the accounting cycle. Uh, for the next 10 or 15 minutes, I'll be actually repeating of what we were doing in the first three chapters. We're gonna summarize it. So, we got some objectives, we're not gonna do this. I'll be explaining today in the first two lectures. You girls separate, okay? Go and separate. No, just move away. Separate, okay? And next next ones will be just going out, okay? So we have four topics to discuss today. In the first hour we discuss using a worksheet and closing the books. And later on we're gonna discuss summary of the accounting cycle and classified balance sheet. Uh, we've already covered most of the accounting cycle, so we're now going to get the last two steps. So, worksheet. We've already done and we've already studied a worksheet. Worksheet is optional, meaning it is not required. You do not have to do it, but it makes your life easy. It makes it to work easy. It's a uh, many 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 columns and we're going to cover them one by one by one all of the columns that we fill out and every step of the way we make sure that all debits and all credits are equal. In other words we're going to do a lot of trial balances. Exactly three trial balances. These are all coming. It is not permanent and it involves five steps and let's go over it. Step number one, you prepare a trial balance on the worksheet. We call this trial balance unadjusted trial balance. You have to do this, we already did this in chapter two, and you need, you have to do the unadjusted trial balance on your midterm exam. This is all familiar to you. You do it in these two columns. So, you always begin with the accounting titles. Cash, account receivables, supplies, whatever it is. Then, salary payable. Uh, then, notes payable, account payable. So, you do whatever the accounts are. And in the first two columns, you do the trial balance. The left column is the debit. The right column is the credit. We already studied this in chapter 2 and later on in chapter 3, it's exactly the same. Next step, number 2, you make the adjustments. That was, and we did this in chapter 3. The adjustments we do always at the end of the period. And again, there will be example coming for this, there will be example coming for everything. So, step number two, make the adjustments. And after that, you do, it's called adjusted trial balance. So, the first trial balance is called unadjusted trial balance. The second one is called adjusted trial balance. Come on, girls. All right, all right. Just move a little bit, just move a little bit. All right, I mean, so the next ones will be out, okay, because we don't need kindergarten here, okay? We're trying to be a university, and I'm teaching accounting, and most of you failed, okay? Most of you failed, okay? So, you need, you need to learn. If you do this, you're going to continue failing, okay? All right, so, then you do the adjusted trial balance. Out of the adjusted trial balance, step four is you copy these accounts, you copy either into the income statement or into the balance sheet, and on step number five, you prepare the statement. So, you total the statement column, compute net income, and complete the worksheet. And from the worksheet, you make the statements. This is what actually you were supposed to do on the midterm. You were supposed to do the adjustments, you were supposed to extend the columns, do the income statement, and do the balance sheet out of it. And with this theory now, we make a simple 
Example. Example is the trial balance. This is the trial balance at the end of the period. You got some cash, account receivable, supplies, equipment, accumulated depreciation, account payable, unearned revenue, capital drawings, service revenue, and some expense. And you are given additional data. And the additional data is the data for adjustments. Here you got four adjustments. Adjustment number one, supplies on hand total 140. So the adjustment will be debit, supplies, expense, credit, supplies. It's coming in a couple of slides. Next one, depreciation for March is 200. The adjustment for depreciation is debit, depreciation, expense, credit, accumulated depreciation. Next one is unearned revenue amounted to 130. So you will adjust the unearned revenue and the earned revenue. So we're going to have debit unearned revenue, credit earned revenue. And the last one is accrued salaries are 350. Here the adjustment will be straightforward. Debit salaries expense, credit salaries payable. All of these four will be coming. So, out of this, you will copy, copy these. You copy all of these numbers, and that's the first column. These debits and credits will be the second one. So, these are, you copy these. This is the trial balance. All you do is copy the debits and copy the credits. That's all you do, nothing more, nothing less. Next, you do adjustments. So, trial balance amounts can come directly from the ledger account. All you do is copy. Next step, you do, or step number two, you do the adjustments. And for the adjustments, notice how the adjustments work. You have adjustment A960, and here you have A960. They have B200. B200. They have C170, C170. So you have A credit, A debit. You have B debit, B credit, C debit, C credit, D debit, D credit. We number them A with the adjustment. So A is supplies used. So for A supplies used, you credit supplies and you will debit a brand new account called supplies expense. Okay? For B, depreciation expense, where is B? Here. You have depreciation expense and you're going to have somewhere B accumulated depreciation. So, one by one, you do the debit, you do the credit, you do the adjustments totals to make sure everything's correct. And then you add debits with debits, credits with credits, and if there's a difference, you make the adjusted trial balance. So, step number one, this is step number two, now we're going through step number three. Step number three, adjust the trial balance. You total. Here, you just copy. Here, you just copy. 1,000 is debit. Adjustment, 960 credit. So, you have a total of debit 140, or balance of 140. You do this for every column. You were supposed to do this on the midterm. This is exactly as it was required to do on the midterm. Okay? And this is exactly what we already did in chapter 3. Now, next step is you will copy rows, sorry, the, the rows for income statement and for balance sheet. Income statement will come from, let's see, expenses, salaries, expense, revenue, that's in the income statement. So you're going to copy revenue in the income statement, expense, miscellaneous expense, supplies expense, depreciation expense. So you will copy in the income statement one revenue and these 
for expenses. Okay? So these five rows we're going to copy into the income statement. Next, cash we copy to balance sheet. Account receivable copy to balance sheet. Supplies copy to balance sheet. Equipment copy to balance sheet. Accumulated depreciation copy to balance sheet and so on. Let's take a look. There it is. For the income statement, we copy the revenue and we copy the or expenses. That's it. Copy. Nothing else. All we do is copy. All right. For the balance sheet, we copy the rest. All the others which are not in the income statement go to the balance sheet. And there you see it. You got in the balance sheet the cash, the account receivable on the other end, roofing supplies, equipment, accumulated depreciation, account payable, and you also have separately the salaries payable. We needed to add salaries payable again. It is part of the liabilities of the balance sheet. So, step number one, step number two, step number three, step number four, step number five. And from this, we create the income statement, equity statement, in balance sheet. But there is one little thing. In the income statement, you have debit 2410 and credit 317. The debits are expenses, the credits are the revenues. The difference between them is the profit or loss. We call it net. Income. So we will add one extra row below called net income. Here, net income is going to have a debit balance in this particular case. There it is. This difference between these two, 3170 and 40, uh, 2410, the difference is 760. And that represents the net income or net loss. Net income was just called profit. So that's the 760. And to balance, we copy the, sell, uh, uh, the 760 from the income statement. We copy over to the balance sheet. So to make it balance, the 760 net income will balance out the income statement. And the same 760 will balance out the balance sheet. So, now you've got everything balanced. With everything balancing, now we prepare the income statement. And the income statement is amazingly easy. You got the revenue, you got the expenses, you already got the net income, you just copy the numbers in a format. And the balance sheet is a little tricky because you have to first compute equity. So, step number two, first income statement, then you do equity statement, and then balance sheet. So, let's go to income statement. Income statement, some question, not interesting, worksheet, some stuff, okay? And here is the income statement. You copy the revenue, you copy the for expenses, you got the net income. Very straightforward. Now, all you do is copy, 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 copy. All right? This is how you were supposed to do it on the midterm. Next one is the equity statement. The equity statement always begins with the beginning capital. At the beginning, you add net income and you subtract the withdrawals. The withdrawals, we say here, less. And notice that the withdrawal, which is less, has a minus sign. The minus sign, we use the brackets around 600. So the equity statement is very easy, very straightforward. You take 7,000 is the beginning capital. You add net income, meaning the profit. You subtract the withdrawal and you get the ending capital. So, beginning capital means capital March 1, ending capital means March 
31, okay? And for some reason, I don't know why, many students got confused on the midterm because there was no withdrawal, they didn't know what to do. And the answer is, when there is no withdrawal, you put zero. So if there's no withdrawal, you say less withdrawings, you still write it. And then you write the number zero. Zero means nothing, okay? So you have to say drawings, but if you don't have, you must put zero. This means that otherwise when they read and they don't, they don't see drawings, they think you make a mistake, okay? So you always want to put drawings, and if it's nothing, you just say zero, okay? That's easy. And now, notice the ending capital is 7,160. So we're going to take this number, 7,160, and copy on the balance sheet. 7,160. Let's move on. And it's the balance sheet, and at the capital, you put 7,160 already. Okay? So you copy the 7,160, and you copy everything else from the balance sheet. You copy the cash, the account receivable, the supplies, and I will be covering in the next hour what is current assets and what are long-term assets. That's the next lecture, okay? I will cover it uh, next hour after the break. And then you have equipment, other stuff, and then liabilities. You divide again into current liabilities, long-term liabilities, and equity. I'll be discussing this. We call this classified balance sheet. That's the last topic for today in the second hour. And you prepare what's called a classified balance sheet. Okay? <coughs> oh, that's it. Let's see what's next. Adjusting entries. So, we've done the worksheet. We've done the balance sheet. We do adjusting entries. This is chapter three. Everything is exactly the same. You do, you journalize them, you post them. The adjusting entries are the same entries. Entry A, B, C, D. Again, the adjusting entries will be supplies, expense, debit, supplies, expense, credit, supplies. The next one is debit, depreciation, expense, credit, accumulated depreciation. Next one. Debit, unearned revenue, credit, service revenue. Same as earned revenue. Last one, salaries expense and salaries payable. All right, guys, enough, okay? All right, enough. Maybe you should separate two. All right, so these are the adjusting entries. Discussion question. And now we go through closing. So everything I discussed so far over the last 15 or so minutes, you are all familiar. We did this in chapter one, two, and three. Now comes the new part. And the new part is called closing the books or closing the account. To close means to set to zero. You put the value back to zero. So, some accounts are closed and other accounts are not closed. Accounts that are closed we call temporary accounts. Account, accounts that are not closed we call permanent accounts. Temporary accounts are usually in the income statement. So, all revenues, all expenses, and the withdrawal account. So, temporary accounts are the accounts from the income statement, the revenue accounts, the expense accounts, and the drawing accounts. You have to close these. So, the accounts from the income statement, you should close. The accounts from the balance sheet, you do not close. They remain the way they are. So, Permanent accounts are the assets accounts, the liabilities accounts, and the capital account. These are the ones you don't close. 
So, in the accounting cycle, we have like nine steps. These are the last two steps I will be explaining now. So, closing entries. Closing entries, we say transfer, transfer balances to net income. Oh, sorry, transfer balances of the net income and of the owner drawing to owner's capital. The way it works is by using an intermediate account called income summary. So the only one piece which is new is income summary. Let's see. Here it is. This is what it looks like. And the new one is called income summary. The way you do it is you transfer expenses to income summary and then you transfer revenues to income summary. So you take the expenses, you take the revenues and the income summary will represent the net income. So you take all the debits from here and you transfer them here. You take all the credits from revenues and you transfer them into the income summary and then the balance of the income summary will be your net income. You take the balance of the income summary, su summary and you transfer it to the owner's capital. Okay? And separately, you will take the drawing and transfer it to the owner's capital. And they give you the steps. When you close, you're closing four steps. And the steps are always the same. Step number one, close revenues. You see the number one there? I'm a little bit short. One there. Next, step number two. For the income summary, you close expenses. So, step one, close revenues. Step two, close expenses. Step three, close the income summary. And step four, close the drawing. This step will build for you the capital account. This is the same as preparing or creating the equity statement. The equity statement gives you the ending balance of the capital account and the ending balance of the capital account adds the net income and the withdrawals. All right. And now maybe we can see some numbers. Okay. All right. So, how do we journalize? We journalize by using the account income summary. So, let me see. I have it over here. Okay, I'll do this again now. So that just to show you how it's done. We put the expenses on the left. Maybe we get a little bit of light. Yeah, the light works. So, you got income. Income summary. And you got some expenses. You may have two or three expenses. Let's say salary expense and supply. Salary expense will have a debit balance. Salary expense, then 50. 1,050. Supply expense, 960. How does it work? Very simple. If supply, a salary expense is 1050, you say credit 1050. Credit 1050, balance becomes zero. And then you say debit income summary and 50. So you close it, sorry, you transfer it by crediting here and debiting here. This one is exactly the same. 960 debit balance, you close by crediting 960 here, balance becomes zero, and then 
you do the 960 over here. And that's how you close the second expense. If you got three, four, five expenses, each one you copy and close exactly the same. And here is revenue, service revenue. Service revenue. And service revenue balance is 3170. So all you do now is say David. 3170 balance becomes zero and then credit 3170. And you effectively transferred this account. And now you have other, 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 you draw and you have income summary. In the income summary, the balance is 960. Uh, no, sorry, 760. And this 760 you close into the capital. So here you have capital. And the capital, how much was the initial balance? Does anyone remember the capital, the initial balance? What was the initial balance? We need to go a few slides ago for the capital. Okay, the initial balance was 7,000. Uh, 7,000 capital is credit. Okay, so 7,000 is credit. And now we take this 760 and we say 760 debits and credit 760 so this will transfer it here and here you're going to have withdrawal and the withdrawal is how much is the withdrawal 600 withdrawal 600 say credit withdrawal 600 600 all right and then all you do is draw the line and have, well, what's the new balance? And the new balance is 7,760 minus 600 is 7,160. And maybe the way we do it is you underline two lines over here. All right? And that's it. This is the closing process. Let's see what we got and let's see what we have here. All right, so closing number one is first step number one. Step number one, close income, debit credit. Step number two, close all expenses, debit income summary, credit all expenses. Step number three, close income summary into capital. And step number four, close the drawing into this. So, uh, service revenue, that's step number one. Here, expense and expense, step number two. Now, closing income summary is step number three. And over here, closing the withdrawal is step number four. So, one, two, three, four. It's respectively. One, two, three, four. Okay? And let's see what's next. What's next is, which is the last step, should be step number nine, is preparing is called post-closing trial balance. And post-closing trial balance is after you close all temporary accounts, all permanent accounts, when you list them, they must again balance. Okay? This is yet another check. It says it proves the quality of permanent account balances. Permanent accounts are the accounts which you use to begin the next period. So, you begin 
by balancing. All you want to do is you check, you did not make calculation mistake. Okay? You do it just to check. So all temporary accounts are zero, all permanent accounts are here. So post closing means trial balance of the permanent accounts. Temporary are zero 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 zero. All zero. Okay. Post closing trial balance. So, uh, I will finish with this last piece, which is the accounting cycle. In the accounting cycle, is begins with chapter one and step one. Analyze business transaction. In analyzing business transaction, you say, let's say you have a revenue, cash go up, revenue go up. Step number two, journalize. And that's exactly how you're supposed to do it in the midterm. And journalize means debit crack cash, credit service revenue. So the first step is just analyze. Well, the second step is you do journalize. And that's what it was. If you remember, the midterm said require, number one, journalize. Next step, after you do the journalizing, you do posting. You take from the journal and post the ledger. So posting to the ledger is step number three. Step number four is prepare a trial balance. And again, this is what we call unadjusted trial balance. Let me see if I have the trial balances. No, I don't. Let's write them out here for you. Uh, trial. Balances just to make sure that there is no confusion. Yeah, three trial balances. So, the first trial balance we call unadjusted trial balance. You already did that in the midterm. Unadjusted. Unadjusted. There it is. An unadjusted trial balance is step number. Step number four. After that, step number five is you do adjusting entries. So you do the adjusting entries. And after the adjusting entries, you do adjusted trial balance. Adjusted trial balance. So, adjusted trial balance, trial balance. The second one is adjusted. It's step six. So, journalizing, chapter two, posting to the ledger, chapter two, preparing a trial balance, chapter two, adjusting entries, that's chapter three. Next one, adjust the trial balance, that's chapter three. S step number seven is prepare financial statements. In preparing the financial statement is chapter three. Step number eight, journalize and post closing entries. So closing entries is chapter four, this chapter. That's what we just did. And the last step is prepare a post closing trial balance. So post closing trial balance. So trial balance unadjusted. Step four, adjusted. Step six, last one is Post closing. Step now, and this is the accounting cycle. Essentially, what we've done so far up to this point is we take the steps of the accounting cycle, the nine steps of the accounting cycle, and we slice them into chapters. Chapter one, first step. 
chapter 2, the next three steps, chapter 3, the next three steps, and now the last two steps in <coughs> chapter 4. Okay. And your midterm was you were expected to do everything up to the financial statements. Okay. Let's see what else we have. Correcting entries is if you made a mistake, you don't have to study, I don't have to, I will not require, you don't have to do any correcting entries. They are not necessary, only if you made a mistake, you're going to do it in your next accounting class, we're not going to do this here. Correcting entries, example, 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 if you want you can see, and we take a break.